If you came to see Brother Walter, he's out right now. I'm not Brother Walter. But sometimes he's, sometimes uh, my wife and his wife says we think a lot alike. So, and we have a tendency of stepping on each other. I do Sunday school and uh, we kind of step on each other. Or, or I lead into what he's going without us even knowing that we're leading into each other. God works in mysterious ways. Right. Today we're going to be in John 14, 1 through 11. John 14, 1 through 11. Mm -hmm. And there's some other scriptures that will go along with that, but y'all won't need to have to turn to that. It's just confirming some of the statements that are made in, in John 14. This takes place in a time where prior to Jesus and the disciples going to the garden and he's getting captured by the, the Pharisees, okay? Um, he's meeting with his, with his disciples, okay? This is right after the famous rooster crow three times prediction on Peter, okay? So it's, it continues on with let Jesus speaking now. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it weren't not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may also be and where I go you know and the way you know so Thomas says to him Lord we do not know where you are going and how can we know the way and Jesus said I am the way the truth the life no one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. And Philip says to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. And Jesus responded, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen my Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe me for the sake of works themselves. Mm -hmm. Still questioning. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that hit me there. They're still questioning. We know Thomas likes to doubt on that, right? Because he has that nickname. But now, Philip gets in the act. Okay, they're still confused on what's going on. So John 14, 6 says, I am the way and the truth and the life. Mm -hmm. Only one, him. Mm -hmm. How many ways are there to God? One, one. one way. It's an important question for today. <laughs> Because it's an important way that the Christians need to find a way to connect to God. Mm -hmm. In our scripture this morning, it says uh, Jesus answers the questions from both Thomas and Philip with, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. This is the one of seven times that I am statements 
from Jesus. In these statements, Jesus wants to wants us to think in the same capacity of God. Okay, because if you remember back in Exodus three fourteen, God said to Moses, "I am who I am." So this Jesus' way of letting Philip and Thomas know, as well as the other disciples, okay, that he is directly linked with God. Amen. That he is who God is. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just like your children are who you are. Yeah. By using the same expression, Jesus claims divinity. He claims to be God's equal. He claims to be part of the eternal Godhead. Other paths to God, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. How many ways are there to God? One. Ask the people who sit next to you at the work. How many, people, how many ways there is to God? People today want to believe that there's all kinds of pathways to God. By doing good works, by being a nice guy, by giving money to charity. For instance, the believers of Muhammad, Buddha, Confucius, they think they're all on par with, with Jesus. I'm telling you, I know you don't, okay? But there's people out there that believe Confucius, a guy who wrote funny little words and little sentences and put them in cookies, are on the same level as our Jesus. The Bible shows us that humankind has tried all sorts of ways to get to God in heaven. During the Old Testament period, for instance, Israel's neighbors thought they could get in touch with God through sacrificing of their children or by dancing and screaming as they did with Baal in the contest of, against Elijah. During the New Testament period, there were those in Israel, like the Pharisees, who thought they could get in touch with God by observing the laws and the rules and the regulations. People want to believe that there are many ways as there are different people. Mm -hmm. And it always bothered me. I mean, it has always bothered me that, that people think that they can get to heaven by doing other things. So suppose you went to a dentist, okay? And the dentist says, well, you have a, well, you need a root canal, but I'm gonna go through your ear. And then I'm gonna come down through your jaw, then around the corner, and then go through it. Would you let him? I mean, Jesus says it, I mean, plainly here, okay? He is the path. Amen. There is no other. Okay? There's one direct path to God, and that's through Jesus. Amen. But still, there are people out there who don't believe it. Mm -hmm. There are many Christians that know God, okay? Mm -hmm. But do not truly know that the path to God is through Jesus. That's true. That's true. It's disheartening. It is. Jesus cuts through all the nonsense about paths, our faith, and other, and other ways in our text this morning by saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes through the Father except through me. Now, I know I've said that about six times already, but it's important to understand that. It's important to understand the meaning of what he is saying here. Okay, he's not just talking the talk. Yeah. Okay, he's just he's not popping out a tweet on his Twitter account. He's letting us know that there is no other way. 
There's no other way. And we also know that we need to realize that this is an intolerant, intolerant teaching and it makes the Christian faith intolerant of other religions. Yeah. Now, I know that might offend somebody, okay? Now, I'm not saying that you don't love that person, okay? Mm -hmm. God loves you. Mm -hmm. He hates the sin. Right. God loves you, but he hates the sin. Yeah. You can love your neighbor, but you don't have to accept what they do. Yeah. You should not not pray That's right. for somebody because they are different than you. Amen. Amen. You should not not love somebody because they're different than you. Right. I mean, Jesus was an example of this, okay? And here's Jesus a little bit frustrated here because he's been walking with these cats for several years now okay mm -hmm. loving everybody right. okay not just the guys with the money mm -hmm. right the downtrodden the diseased right mm -hmm. the impaired mm -hmm. the ones possessed with demons how many here would go up and start hugging on a, a guy possessed with demons in them most of us would just sidestep a little bit, shuffle Amen. around, right? Amen. It would. But Jesus went right to them Amen. and loved on them. Can you do that? I have difficulty. You know. But it's getting better. By saying this, Jesus spares us from having to dabble in all sorts of religious activities, okay? We don't have to raise a perfect sheep anymore, okay? Or a bunny or a chicken or whatever, okay? We don't have to take that to the Pharisees and say, here, forgive me of my sins. Okay. Jesus is telling us we can go straight to him and ask for forgiveness. And you know what? If you're of sincere heart, he gives it to you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the coolest thing that about that, all right, and, and I and I know our parents do that for us, okay, and we do it for our children, okay, but God forgets about it. Mm -hmm. It's gone. Yeah. It's not brought up, you know, six years later say, Oh, you remember when you We don't even have to try to make the connection with God as long as we have Jesus. Amen. We don't have to earn our way into heaven if we have Jesus. Amen. And I don't know why I put this, but we don't have to believe in weird things and do weird things if we have Jesus. Amen. Amen. I mean, can you imagine sacrificing your children? Hmm. Now there's times that I wanted to sacrifice my <laughs> child, okay, for some things he did, okay, but I don't think I could do that just to say, hey, these cats over here look cool. I want to be with them. Come here, Jake. Let me get my knife out. Jesus is not the only person who used the expression, the way. In Acts 9-2, Shortly after Jesus ascended into heaven, it was used to identify the early church. Yeah. True. Saul, before he became Paul, went to Damascus to persecute members of the way. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. In the Old Testament, the idea of the way appears often. Throughout Psalms, we read and we read, but we read of the way. Try that again. Throughout Psalms, we read of the way laid out for man by God. Psalms twenty-seven, eleven: Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. 
Psalms 32, 8 reads, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will console you and watch over you. The words of Isaiah, the prophet, that foreshadowed the ministry of John the Baptist in Isaiah 43 says, A voice of one calling in the desert prepares the way for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Mm -hmm. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. The way is not following traditions, handed down from generations to generations. And, and, it's, and it's really weird, okay? I mean, if you do research for, for Sunday school, okay, this is how I found this out. Researching different things in, in, for Sunday school lessons, there's a lot of traditions, oh, yeah. okay? Traditions that man put in oh, yeah. religion, okay? That's right. A lot. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of said Christians, they think that that part of the Bible's teaching, mm -hmm. okay? Which it isn't. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important as a Christian to have a relationship with Jesus. Amen. If something doesn't seem right, and we say it all the time here, check our facts. Okay, open the book, crack it open. If you want the, where I got it from, I'll be more than happy to provide it for you. But I want you to get in the book. Okay? I want you to prove me wrong. Because you know what? If you're digging into the Bible, I'm doing my job. Yeah. And God wants me to get you to him. Okay, I'm a matchmaker. Kind of, if you want to say that. Mm -hmm. Ugly matchmaker, but I'm a matchmaker. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the way is Jesus himself. John 14, 5. Lord asked Thomas. Can you imagine, though? Can you imagine being around these cats, right? And here comes Thomas asking another question. Another doubt. I mean... If he was around my friends, we'd all just send him out oh, here. Here's Thomas again. You know, get with the program, Thomas. Get with the program, Thomas. Yeah. How can we know the way? And Jesus' answer for that was, I am the way. Amen. I mean, later on, he actually has to take his hand and stick it into the side. ye of little faith. The way is to follow Jesus himself. Not a system of doctrine. So it, if you know your theology and if you memorize vast sections of the Bible but you have not made personal contact with Jesus then you're not following the way. Mm -hmm. Amen. To follow the way, you need to have a personal, living relationship with Jesus. Amen. In which you love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes through the Father except through me. Amen. Strictly speaking, the way is a road going somewhere. It is not aimless. It's not wandering. It has a destination, a goal. So, for instance, the Exodus was the way out of Egypt to the Promised Land. Mm -hmm. It would have been a straight and direct path if it wasn't for so many losses of faith. Mm. True. Y'all realize that, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they walked around for 40 years. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the path, and most of it has in the back of the Bible, it kind of goes like this, and then this, and then this, and back and forth. I mean, uh, they passed by the Promised Land about six times. Mm 
but each time their lack of faith kept them from crossing over. Yep. Jesus is the way. He is the way to the Father's house where he's preparing a room for us. Now, I know it says mansion, okay? But I'm not sure if it's what we consider what a mansion is, okay? A big old house, you know, on a hill, you know, white fence around it and whatnot. Just imagine the glory of being with God. Amen. I mean, the song says you don't know if you're going to fall down to your knees because it's so glorious. It's kind of like being with your wife when you first met. It's still not, baby. Okay? Um, but you always wanted to be there. You know what I mean? When you first started seeing your girl, okay? And I don't know if it's the same way for girls because I'm not a girl, okay? But... I mean, you could be on a telephone call with them for, uh, yeah, I mean, next thing you know, it's morning. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't know what you talked about. Right? right. <laughs> that, to me, is all you're going to be when you're in front of God. Mm -hmm. 365, right? Amen. <laughs> I mean, just, there's no sense of time. There's no sense of space. There's just love. Amen. Jesus is the way of salvation. Acts 16, 17. The slave girl with the spirit of prediction who followed Paul and Silas in Philippa, Philippi clearly saw this. She shouted, These men are servants of the Most High God. Who are they telling you the way to be saved? Mm -hmm. To know God as your Lord, or Jesus as your Lord and Savior, okay? is meant to be once you're in that in that realm okay there should be a presence of you of doing what jesus did while he was on earth that should show to the non-believers amen Does that make sense yeah. amen okay mm -hmm. um when we first came to this church a while ago right four years ago we were sitting right there where my wife's sitting and there was a an older lady sitting right here where my my phone is and as soon as we walked in there was a aura around her there was a glow around her that was walter's mama mm -hmm. and we were invited in we were accepted even though we were just some disgraceful sinners but she loved us and loved us and loved us mm -hmm. i mean to the point where one day we were talking about grandparents day or something like that. I said, and I never had any grandparents, which I didn't. Well, I had to have, but never met them or anything like that. And she goes, honey, I'll be your grandma. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is two or three days after we first met. That's what God does. Amen. That's what Jesus did for his walk on this earth. Mm -hmm. He loved everybody, whether you had warts, blisters, Leprosy, blind. He loved you. Yeah. It wasn't what you could do for him. Mm -hmm. It's what he could do for you. Yeah. And what's so hard about loving somebody? I know it's sometimes it's hard to love him. But but I thank you for doing that. No. Jesus is the only person that can atone for your sins. Amen. Okay, you go to Jesus and you ask for forgiveness. Okay, you don't go to God and ask for God for your forgiveness. Okay, you go to Jesus and ask for forgiveness. Just like these other religions, Moses could mediate the law. God gave Moses the power to mediate the law. Muhammad could brandish a sword. Buddha could give personal counsel. Confucius could offer a couple of wise sayings. But only Jesus offers the atonement of sin for the world. That's right. You realize that? 
Okay, this is very, very, very important, okay? Jesus didn't, didn't die on the cross and shed his blood for the Jews. He didn't do it for the Romans. He didn't do it for, he did it for everybody. Amen. Whether you were a believer or a non-believer, he shed so that you could become a believer and be saved. Amen. You know, the, the, the passage I always like is when, um, when he's talking, and I'm going to butcher this and I apologize, but a sick person, or I mean a healthy person doesn't need a physician. Yes. Right. Right? Yep. Right. Those who don't know God are the ones who know who need God. Okay. Amen. So in conclusion, how many ways are there to God? One. 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 And can you say it with me? I am, I am the way, the way and, the truth, and the truth and the truth and the life. And the life. And the life. No one comes. Comes to the Father, to the Father except, through except through me. Amen. That's all it says. Amen. And I thank you. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for allowing us to read your word, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to live your word, Lord. And hopefully we thank you for being your word, Lord. To love our neighbors as we love ourselves. To love our neighbors as you love us. For you truly are the way, Lord. And guide us in your light and your path to walk your path and your way, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.